the, the time is well, well past to strip the titles. Um, I'm constantly amazed at the indulgence of the royal family. And I suppose Parliament, because it, the that um, that initiative uh, rests with Parliament. And I understood uh, last year, a couple of years ago, there was a bill, but I didn't see it move forward to remove the titles of uh, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Breaking right now, Meghan Markle's reputation. Yes, that is right. It has been her biggest PR disaster in what royal insiders are describing to me as a week from hell, a week where she morphed back to the deal or no deal girl who you would think she had so much opportunity to move away from. A damning new column released today by the Daily Mail's diary editor, Richard Eden. And I want to share some of this with you. Says, one of the most awkward and revealing episodes since the Duke and Duchess of Sussex quit royal duties in 2020 to find freedom and a fortune came on a red carpet in Los Angeles almost a year ago. Unaccompanied by Prince Harry, Meghan couldn't have looked less regal as she walked down the carpet at the Power of Women event and waited to be interviewed by a reporter for Variety magazine like any other celebrity. King Charles's daughter-in-law posed photographers like the wannabe starlet she once was and in the most undignified moment of all, was then rushed along impatiently by another guest. And then we come to the most recent weekend, where Richard Eden writes, Meghan was alone again on another red carpet in her home city, competing for attention with some of those guests at the LA Children's Hospital Gala. This time, however, she had to suffer further mortification with fellow guests feeling free to voice their criticism of her. There wasn't a great deal of warmth. From people when she arrived, Lizzie Cundy, a British socialite and television presenter, later told Richard Eden she wasn't there for long, Lizzie said. She seemed to be there for the photographs. Miss Cundy, who the Duchess had once befriended before she met Harry and then ghosted, afterwards added of her erstwhile pal, Meghan needs LA more than LA needs her. LA people feel they've been played by her. Harry and Meghan were loved because they're part of the royal family, but they've bowed mouth the royals who are loved in LA. It's a shame because charity work is where her and Harry do great things. And Richard Eden went on to say when Meghan was still a working royal, she would never have been subjected to such a reception or criticism. Now, Lee Cohen, who is uh, one of America's top royal commentators, has gone viral for writing after that night. Anyone else sick to death of that trollop in the red dress? Who on earth could he mean? And Lee Cohen joins me now from... Lee, are you still in, still in the battered state of Florida? And first and foremost, so glad you're safe. Everything okay there? Thanks so much, Dan. Yes, indeed. Um, and the... The, the sun is out, and thank heaven we have great local leadership in our governor, uh, DeSantis, uh, who uh, is battle-tested and knew exactly how to handle this, uh, this weather crisis like so many. You know, I'm such a fan of Florida. I spent eight weeks there earlier this year, and it's funny, I was saying to people who were there who lived there goodness me just the only the only downside is the hurricanes the only downsides is the hurricanes now lee definition of trollop an immoral or sexually promiscuous woman <laughs> so i'm presuming you mean immoral when you're talking about Ms. markle well my my comment was less about uh her character and more about her appearance mm. um and Dan, I'm obviously no fashion expert, as you can see. Me either. Uh, <laughs> but the dress looked highly inappropriate, revealing as it was, particularly around the bust area uh, for an event benefiting a children's hospital. And, you know, let's not forget that, like it or not, Dan, this woman still has the Duchess of Sussex title, but with no royal advisors to ensure 
that a royal image is being maintained. So uh, that's how you end up with uh, these kinds of images, unfortunately juxtaposed in the American press and the mouthpieces in the American press uh, uh, that are favorable to uh, the Duchess uh, will broadcast the Duchess next to this very revealing uh, dress. So uh, th th there's no stopgap, whereas before uh, her image was sort of protected and maintained. I know, we're seeing the real Meghan Markle, aren't we? That is the issue. Mm -hmm. And it's not good. I mean, look, I think, Lee, it was such an extraordinary moment because you would think she would have been so desperate to avoid going back to being a D-list celebrity. That deal or no deal box opener when she had a genuine chance to change the world. Mm. Mm. When you look at what happened on the red carpet, I think it is worth us having a look at this footage because you compare and contrast to when we see Catherine and the event. I know we're going to be talking about Catherine a bit later in, in the show, but when you see Catherine, for example, at, at Southport, I mean, the contrast could not have been greater. And I think, Lee, to use one of your words, this was the return of Meghan Markle the Troller. And Meghan, right and Meghan straight oh, ahead. Oh, 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 oh. And right here, please. Oh, oh ladies, together, can we start you at the beginning, please? Together, ladies. And together, ladies, right here. Together. Ladies. And ladies, and ladies, please. Ladies Thank together. You. Oh, one stop. And can we get all the smiles in one room? And there it is. There Thank, you, Thank you, cute. Oh. Thank you so much. Start with Matt, who's just next to me. Right here. Excellent. And we'll join Chris Thank you. And get ready to run. There we go. Beautiful. And then Paul and Megan together. Paul and Megan. Okay. And the girl yeah. with the camera in front. Uh, your hand. Paul. Your flesh. Thank you. So she dragged over the chief executive there. Then she had this very brief moment with a child. And it's so performative. It's like 10 seconds and for a picture. And again, I'll contrast it with Catherine, the Princess of Wales and Prince William, who at the Southport massacre scene, Lee, spent half an hour with every family who lost a child. And there were no pictures, Lee, of that. But she was using these kids, wasn't she, as a photo prop? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, this is a consistent pattern. And Dan, you, you said a moment ago, you know, the juxtaposition with uh, Catherine, mm. uh, Princess of Wales. It couldn't be more stark. You know, uh, un unfortunately, some of Catherine's dissenters uh, actually attacked her for that beautiful video uh, that, you know, released a couple of weeks ago where she announced, you know, the, the end of her treatment for now, which was absolutely lovely. And Dan, it projected an image very wholesome of family love, um, of genuineness, of authenticity. And that that is the polar opposite. Uh, that image is the polar opposite of what Meghan Markle projects and, you know, one wonders if any thought goes into these things, you know, before the appearances actually happen. I know. Indeed. Indeed. No, it wasn't good. And what are you hearing, Lee? Like, what is the view stateside? Is there still an interest in Meghan or are people in America looking at this and thinking, goodness me, what happened to our princess? Well, I, I think uh, it's like so much else in America, uh, even on the issue of yeah. Duchess Difficult, uh, we are divided and um, she certainly stokes uh, division. Um, there, She certainly has a core group of supporters uh, for whom she can do no wrong. But 
this is, I think, to be considered through the lens of we don't have royalty here. I'm not telling anyone anything they don't know. But uh, what you might not know, in particular British, British audiences, that Americans really don't have an understanding of what royalty is all about, and pick, particularly the nature of royalty that is public service. And uh, I don't know if Meghan herself didn't understand this or didn't care or didn't choose to really delve into what her role would be. But um, it, it, the, there is such a distinction between celebrity, which is uh, the world that Megan comes from, and the public service, selfless public service. The best example I can think of is the beloved late queen who dedicated her life, her whole life, to her people, put put herself and uh, her own interests behind her public duty. That is exactly the antithesis of the approach of Meghan Markle, uh, who, who puts herself and her interests front and center and is, is the reason that from the outset, she was probably a poor, uh, a poor fit for the role that she found herself in when she married uh, Prince Harry. Indeed. Now, Lee, I've been speaking about this over the course of the week, and you know I love the outspoken family. I'm constantly looking at what the outspoken family has to say and uh, their comments, and it means a lot to me. And quite a lot of people have been angry, Lee, that sometimes I still refer to Meghan Markle as the Duchess of Sussex. Now, I do it because she is, I guess. I, I mean, I don't think she should be. And do you think when we see these type of grotesque celebrity displays, actually, the time has come to just end the farce? Well, because Dan, I just think the time strip is well, the titles, right? The, the time is well, well past to strip the titles. Um, I'm constantly amazed at the indulgence of the royal family. And I suppose Parliament, because it, the that um that initiative uh rests with parliament and i understood uh last year or a couple of years ago there was a bill but i didn't see it move forward to remove the titles of uh the duke and duchess of sussex um so no, because um, it would really have to be driven by the king the thing is unfortunately no mps are going to be brave enough really I mean, this was a great, it was a great conservative MP who, who, who led that process. I actually had him on my former show mm. on TV News. He represents- I'd like to shake his hand. Yeah, no, and, and absolutely brilliant. But the problem is we've now got this left-wing woke government. So really, mm. unless King Charles says to Keir Starmer, this has to happen. Interestingly though, Lee, uh, you actually also uh, went viral this week for comparing Keir Starmer and Meghan Markle in a post on mm. X, which read, what do Keir Starmer and Meghan Markle have in common? Neither can keep staff. And Lee, I presume mm. you're referring to the fact that Meghan has now lost her 19th member, and staff, member of staff and Ashley Hansen, the global press sector and head of communications who is now going to step down. Indeed. Dan, it, it, it's absolutely head spinning um, and, you know, the, the, the media positioned that as it was an amicable parting, and perhaps it was, we don't know for certain, but, you know, the bottom line is she's leaving and she's won in a very long line, and it has nothing to do with um, being on one side or another of the ocean because staff were piling out the door uh, when they were in the UK, when the Duke and Duchess were in the UK, and now they're they're continuing to pile out the door out here in LA. Uh, so, you know, which by all accounts should understand the Duchess's behavior and desires and motivations, but still the people aren't staying because she's got that reputation that we hear that the Hollywood port, uh, Hollywood reporter uh, deliciously revealed, um, you know, uh, that that she was a demon uh, boss. Yes, that's right. A dictator in high heels. And of course, Lee, they had spoken to 12 staff members. And that's just in America. Remember, it was me who first reported, gosh, how many years ago now? Six years ago that mm. Catherine had fallen out with Meghan Markle because of the way 
that Meghan Markle spoke to staff at Kensington Palace. So come on, this is a trend now. This has been going on a very long time. But Lee, we also got big... Oh, sorry, you go. It's a tidal wave more than a trend, I think. (laughs) Yes, it really is. It really is. But we got the official news this week from People Magazine, uh, briefed to them that, yes, there is now officially a professional separation, something that uh, we've both been talking about for a long time between Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, a friend telling the magazine uh, that it's clear that a twin-track approach, Mm. that's how they describe it, a twin-track approach, Approach is evolving. Mm. They also quote a royal insider saying the Duke and Duchess have now hit their stride as individuals, not just as a couple. The Duke appears focused on his patronage work and the Duchess focused on her entrepreneurial track. So mm. one thing I like to do, Lee, because you know, I I'm a man of the people. I don't use all of that posh highfalutin language. So I like to translate things for uh clarity. And can I just be very clear about what that quote actually means? But first, digestive issues are caused by a potential toxin that's in all of the, quote, healthy foods that scientists have been telling us to eat with a fraudulent food pyramid for the longest time. And this potential toxin causes digestive issues. According to Dr. Gundry, a world-renowned cardiologist, this is affecting millions of people nationwide. Warning signs include weight gain and fatigue, digestive discomfort and stiff joints, even skin problems. Well, Dr. Gundry explains these side effects can be manipulated and mistaken for normal signs of aging because digestive issues develop usually over a matter of years and sometimes even decades. I can assure you that the damage is probably caused by these health foods and it's far from normal. The good news is you can easily help fix the problem from your own home. It's very simple. You just have to know which foods are actually healthy and which contain this hidden potential toxin. So you can go find this yourself at gutcleanseprotocol.com forward slash outspoken. That's gutcleanseprotocol.com forward slash outspoken. I've put the link in our show notes on YouTube and Rumble too. Because after years of research, Dr. Gundry has decided to release an informative video to the public free and uninterrupted, showcasing exactly which foods you need to avoid. Go find that video at gutcleanseprotocol.com forward slash outspoken or click on the link in the description below. But now, back to the show. The Duchess wants to make big bucks. She doesn't give a damn about charity. She doesn't give a damn about making things good for the world because she had that opportunity she wants to make money and that's it so harry might keep doing some charity stuff but for megan now we're just gonna see dollar signs yeah no the dan that you're 100 percent right uh the couple's twin track approach it, it may be a convenient way to justify their separate pursuits and their separate appearances but it it raises questions about whether they are truly still aligned as a team or merely they're following their own personal ambitions the duchess's ambition as you you know so cogently just spelled out uh her own self promotion and her own financial enrichment uh but you know, still staying under the guise of collaboration. And as we know, she she's she's really nothing without uh, the ties and trappings of uh, of Harry's birthright. So how is this going to continue? Indeed, indeed. Now, look, Catherine, amazing appearance in Southport yesterday, her first community visit since ending mm-hmm. her chemo treatment. Quite a controversial headline in some ways in the sun. There it is. People's princess. Mm. Now, the reason that this is controversial for some people, of course, Lee, is that it was always Diana who was referred to as the people's princess. She wanted to be the people's princess. Catherine has always made it very clear that she doesn't intend to ape Diana or do the same thing as Diana. They're such different types of people. So what do you think? Because personally, and I was a big fan of Diana, I'm actually totally comfortable with that description. I think Catherine is the new people's princess. Well, um, I I think she is updated and on her own terms. 
And I think that's very important. Um, Princess Catherine's actions and the overwhelming goodwill that they've generated, Dan, indicates that, you know, she's increasingly viewed as a as a most compassionate, relatable, perhaps the most uh, compassionate and relatable and dedicated royal figure. Uh, dedicated, there's a lot of dedicated royal figures, Princess Anne springing to mind, but Catherine really is up there uh, embodying many of the qualities that so endeared Princess Diana to the public. And, you know, by visiting Southport to meet with the uh, the emergency services personnel, the families of victims, the, the princess showed not only great empathy, but also her ability to connect with people during times of tragedy and hardship. And, you know, Princess Diana is, uh, is, is known for that quality as well. But when I say on her own terms, um, it, this, this, has an element of going farther, uh, particularly in light of the the, the Princess of Wales' uh, health situation. Uh, her, her careful balance of public appearances with her ongoing recovery showcases her dedication to her role while also prioritizing her health. And this relatable approach uh, resonates with many people facing their own challenges and earns the respect, earns respect of all of us around the world. Now, Fergie, the Duchess of York, Sarah Ferguson, mm -hmm. has been speaking out in support of Catherine, the Princess mm -hmm. of Wales, in a new interview overnight on the UK's Five News. Uh, let's have a look and then I'll get you to react off the back, Lee. Well, I think that, that um, it's been incredible how the King went immediately to Cancer Research UK that was just unbelievable and really facing it and mm. talking to people and again it's back to empathy and understanding and I think that was a beautiful moment uh, and I think that is exactly what's needed is to really speak about it and uh, the princess and it was I know it was the, 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 the prince and the princess were at Southport today mm. you know really they're incredible people. When you saw that video uh, you know, the family video released which went you know, around the world in in seconds I'm sure, I don't know whether you've got to see that before it went out. How do you react to something like that, which is very personal? So moving. Yeah. And I think I'm like everybody else here in Britain. We are, we are so um, proud of, and so supportive. And, uh, and I know my mother-in-law would have been so supportive. And it's just very hard when you go through facing all the things you face mm -hmm. in my mastectomy and my melanoma. You know, I know how hard it is to be, have such courage. Yeah. Really lovely moment that I thought, mm -hmm. Lee, and quite significant that Fergie uh, invoked the late Queen there because I think it shows what Fergie is trying to say there is this would have really upset the late Queen because obviously she had become such a big supporter of Catherine in stark contrast to how she mm -hmm. felt about Prince Harry's wife. Well, uh, when when I view this, Dan, I think that uh, uh, Fergie really has evolved. She's come such a long way. And um, I don't know if she has uh, a PR people around her that review her messaging. If she does, I, I think uh, Meghan and Harry should, should borrow them because she <laughs> was pitch perfect in that message and she herself who was you know been ridiculed in the past for uh her actions and antics really uh projects an image that's spot on and uh exactly what um i believe would the royal family would be proud to hear from her lips so it, it it was great to see, and particularly with the knowledge that she she herself is 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 undergoing uh, uh, you know a, a, a challenges with cancer. So that adds something even more authentic and genuine to the message. Spot on, hundred percent, Fergie. Great. Now we're starting to hear a little bit more about Prince George. He's obviously still incredibly young, but the Daily Mail reporting today uh, that he wants to become a chef which is a mm. bit of a surprise. So this is what uh, their report says. Prince George will not be expected to serve in the armed forces before becoming king, breaking centuries of tradition the Mail on Sunday reported last year. You may, however, bump into him at your local pizza parlour if the young royal has his way. For a Norfolk landowner tells uh, the Daily Mail that the Prince and Princess of Wales' son was so excited to visit the restaurant at his 17th century manor home that he declared he saw his future working in the kitchens. So this is Desmond McCarthy, 
who owns Wifeton Hall Cafe near Blakeney. And he said that when George was shown the wood-fired pizza oven, the 11-year-old exclaimed, that's what I want to do when I grow up. So obviously it's early days, but what, what do you think? Can you, can you see <laughs> Prince George ending up a chef? Well, I think we've got a long way to go. Uh, but what this does strike me, and several things strike me here. Uh, one, I, I think it's great that um, Prince George is uh, being allowed to express an interest in uh, sort of non-traditional things and that he's not, uh, and that the children are not, uh, you know, so on, on such a tight leash uh, publicly that they can't express their own personal interests. I think it's very important to get to know them as people. Uh, and then on the flip side, the decision represents a delicate balance uh, between preserving royal traditions, but then ad adapting to modern expectations. But it reflects uh, Prince William and Princess Catherine's efforts to provide their children with as normal a childhood as possible while preparing them for future royal responsibilities. Uh, Dan, by allowing Prince George more autonomy in shaping his future, and I don't want to go too far out there because we don't know how far the, you know this is going to go. But the royal family is 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 taking a significant step towards a more flexible and individualized approach to royal duties and succession. Indeed, indeed. Now, look, finally, but perhaps most importantly today, Lee King Charles traveling next week to Australia and mm. Samoa. In fact, a week today. It's Friday, I believe that that that, that the tour starts. It's a big deal. This league because he has to stop his cancer treatment in order to make this visit. His doctors didn't allow him to visit New Zealand, which was initially planned as part of the tour. However, it has been announced this week that King Charles will not be attending the COP29 summit in Azerbaijan next month. So mm. the read there, Lee, seems to be that the cancer treatment will begin again on his return from Australia. But it is significant, isn't it, to know that the king is going to be making such a big trip, actually, to work, uh, while very much in the midst of this ongoing cancer battle. Mm, mm, mm. Well, my reaction is it's, it's completely appropriate and even admirable, uh, considering his health situation, the king will not be attending the COP29 summit. Um, and that's for several reasons. You know, obviously, the health considerations, uh, as we, as you just established, and as we all know, the king is continuing uh, to pace himself while undergoing his cancer treatment. And, um, you know, the, the, the trip uh, to Australia it itself um, is will will be, I imagine, challenging under the circumstances, a challenge to his stamina, and that's very admirable that they're continuing that trip. Um, the, the 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 COP summit uh, begins just two weeks after Charles completes this royal tour of Australia and Samoa, uh, which is as I said, already seen as a significant undertaking given his health conditions. But, and it's a big but, I think despite not attending in person, Charles is likely to follow the proceedings closely of the COP summit, given his longstanding commitment to environmental causes. And I don't think there should be any criticism of him for veering from that, um, which you know seems to be a very genuine interest of his. Uh, but listen, um, the most important thing is that the king remains viable and he's got to preserve his strength, as does the Princess of Wales. Uh, there, you know, we know cancer treatments uh, are, are toxic and have a great toll on the body. And it's remarkable that he's making this long range trip to Australia. So, you know, I, I don't feel it should be pushed. I feel this was uh, the right judgment. And by all accounts, the Queen is very pleased that um, the the king is exhibiting some restraint and and consideration for his health. And, and that's a tribute to his duty because he has to maintain his health in order to be a good monarch for his people. Very, very well put. Well, Lee Cohen, who is, of course, I forgot to, because I was talking about Florida at the start, I forgot to, to plug you, Lee, but of course you are 
a royal commentator, a brilliant columnist for the Spectator, the Daily Telegraph, the Sun newspaper, uh, not just on royal issues, even though it's often what we talk about, but also on the intersection of politics between the UK and US. But most importantly, Lee, uh, so glad that you got through the hurricane. And actually, Milton, you know, it was bad. Don't get me wrong. I think the latest death toll is 11, but it wasn't quite the storm of the century that it could have been. So thank God for that. Dan, thank you so much for having me out of all of the places you just mentioned. One of my proudest is to be uh, a regular guest on your Outspoken show. Yay. <laughs> well, I would love to have you back very soon, Lee. Uh, have an amazing weekend. And yeah, I'm glad that the sun is out again in Florida. Thank you so much for watching Dan Wharton Outspoken. Please click on my face just to the bottom left to subscribe to this brand new independent news source and turn on the notification bell so you'll be alerted to our brand new live shows, uncancelled interviews, and special royal episodes. Outspoken is also now available as a podcast, so you can listen to the show every weekday, on the go, wherever you are. You can subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts, and I've put some of the links in the show notes below this video. Keep watching our outspoken clips to support this independent news venture with no spin, no bias, and no censorship, unlike the MSM. Most importantly, I promise to keep fighting for you.